This session is going to be on component identification. Component ID is important before you head into a soldering class or if you get into an inspection skills class like IPC A610. The reason that's important is because we can't be calling things stuff or that blue thing or that yellow thing. Rather, we have to use the language that's part of PCB assembly and understand and learn how to use the correct identification. So when you're talking to your colleague or to a client or to a vendor, we all talk about the same components in the exact same way. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about some common terms that are used in the PCB assembly area with respect to component identification as well as in layout, etc., etc. Um, we're going to talk about polarity and when that comes into play, component orientation, uh, when that matters, uh, especially for polarized devices or for integrated circuits. And then we're going to get into specific SMT and through-hole packages, um, different components, things you need to know. So let's talk about a component. A component is a device that handles electricity. It could be a device such as a transistor, whereby current is regulated on the input or on the base lead of the transistor, and then the current can either be increased or decreased depending on what circuits are around it. We can also talk about logic circuits, such as a CPU. So, for instance, a um, individual transistorized component, a transistor package, a through-hole package, um, would have a single transistor on board, whereas something like an iPhone CPU may have 20 billion transistors on board. So a component is any device that handles uh, electrical currents. The lead emanates from those packages so that we can make some kind of connection to a printed circuit board, a flex piece of hardware, or cables. So that is where the attachment occurs to the conductive surface so that the interrouting between the components can be completed. Of course, we now have surface mount parts and through-hole parts. SMT parts are the most prevalent today because they are subject to automation that is high-speed assembly to reduce the cost basis and to produce something like a cell phone where billions are made each and every year. Then we have the termination, which is a metallized surface. Uh, we see on the left-hand side the castellated surfaces um, coming out of the package, or in the case of the passive device, where it's labeled 103, we have metallization on the ends, and it could be one, three, or five faces in packages like that. And that's where the solder attaches it it's, um, itself, and that intermolecular layer is formed. So we have the electrical uh, conductivity as well as the mechanical structure. Then we have SMDs, or surface mount devices. Those are the devices that lend themselves to the pick-and-place machinery and um, lend themselves to automation. And again, that's the most prevalent style of component body at this point. We also have passive and active components. Passive components are things like capacitors or resistors. They don't amplify electricity. They don't make logic decisions where they either reduce the current, they increase um, the voltage or stabilize the voltage, they do some filtering, etc. Um, then we have active components that have active silicone um, components on the inside of the packaging. And they can amplify electricity, they can make logic decisions. Um, those are active devices, and we treat those differently. Then we have discrete components. Um, these can be either single or double function components, something like a resistor or capacitor, versus integrated components where multiple components, I gave you previously the example of the iPhone CPU, 
has lots and lots of functions in one little package. Then we have the two P's, polarity versus position. Polarity is something that's important where the orientation of the component makes a difference as to how it functions. For instance, electrolytic capacitors have both a positive and negative lead, and the device in the circuit only works one way. That is, the positive lead goes in the correct plated through hole, and the negative lead goes in the correct plated through hole. Then it's position when we have some symmetrical devices. We'll need to know, especially with multi-leaded devices, kind of where the first pin is, where the last pin is, to make sure that we connect to the right parts of the circuitry, and that's called, again, the position or the location on the board. Then we have anodes and cathodes for devices that have polarity. The anode is the positive lead and the cathode is the negative lead. Again, those come into play um, most commonly in the, in the case of capacitors. Then we have va values and tolerances on components. Sometimes this shows up in the way that parts are marked. For instance, caps and resistors in the quote-unquote good old days of through-hole devices had bands associated with them, and those color bands meant something in each different position. In addition, some of the larger surface mount devices have values, tolerances, and acceptable ranges um, printed on them, and maybe even a package configuration. So for through-hole components, there's two styles. Again, through-hole components uh, as the name implies, go through the printed circuit board either on a single-sided board for non-supported holes or go all the way through the board and there is a plated barrel where the lead gets soldered to and you make interconnection to one or multiple layers on the board. So we see here that the horizontal leaded components are called axial components whereas their counterparts are known as radial components. So they would be mounted transverse to the layout of the printed circuit board. Then on integrated circuits, like I previously mentioned, we're going to need to know whether or not the orientation is correct on these parts. So we see here in the upper left the U17 has an arrow pointing to that little dimple. That little dimple refers to a reference pin designation. And located on the silk screen, and the silk screen is the numbers and letters defining where the component goes, um, that would line up with that dimple to determine if it's oriented correctly. The orientation shows up in a variety of fashions, either notches, dimples, wedges, stripes, or even numbers. When we also talk about components, we talk about the lead pitch. So we talk about lead pitch, we mean the distance between two different leads on multi-leaded components. And that is the center line between those components. It could either be on a gull wing like we see here, which has a 50 mil or 50 thousandths of an inch pitch, or it could be on BGAs that may have 0.3 millimeter pitches. So let's talk about the different lead configurations. First up is the gull wing lead. So we see this seagull sitting up here, this cartoon, on the component. And we see the leads, the cartoon of the leads coming out of the component body. And it looks like a human leg. So if we follow the human leg down, we see the knee, the foot, the toe, and the heel. That describes the different areas of the component lead. In the upper right, you'll see a gull wing leaded component. And so that has this type of lead. There are also J leaded components. And the J leaded component, unlike its predecessor, the gull, wi gull wing leaded component that goes out with its foot away from the package, the J leaded component curls up underneath the package body. And it too has a knee, a heel, a toe and a foot. So we describe you know the solder and the solder formation in terms of those components on, on the um, J-leaded component.
Then we have flat leaded components. So as the cartoon shows here, these are flat, come right out of the body um, with no component bends. Then there are eye or butt leads that come out and then down and have no foot or heel or toe associated with them. And then we have lots and lots of, on printed circuit boards, these passive devices, typically resistors and capacitors. So these have leadless terminations on them. There's no leads. You don't see a GA lead. You don't see any um, going leaded components here. Rather, they sit on pads. And there could be one, three, or five-sided metallizations. So for a one-sided passive device, um, the end face gets metallization. Again, that's the um, metal where we're going to make the intermetallic contact with the solder. A three-sided component, as the cartoon shows here, has on the sides metallizations. And then a five-sided component, um, as we're looking down onto the component, has both the top and bottom faces with metallizations. We also have leadless devices um, known by the acronym of BTCs or bottom terminated components. Some common names that you'll see because this is indeed the most common package style in terms of number of placements, primarily for handheld devices. Uh, QFNs, LCCs, LGAs, are the most common names that you'll find. Then we have castellated terminations. So these are half round metallized areas and you'll see there on the left hand side that that metallization comes through and that's again where the solder fillet is going to ride up into and make contact with that metallization of the component down to the board. Then we have ball grid array components so-called BGAs, where we have a consistent array pattern of some sort. In this case, we have what's called a peripheral array pattern. We also have full array patterns that's on the complete bottom side of the device. And then we have lots of other pattern types, but the balls essentially make the interconnection. And the beauty of this is, is that we increase the density. Then we have column grid arrays, which are used for high reliability applications and very similar to the ball grid array patterns, but instead of balls, we have columns. And you'll see on the right hand side, you see the little springs. The little springs are in lieu of the columns or wrap themselves around columns in different configurations. Then there's a through hole version of this style of area array device where you have a high density of interconnections and these are pin grid arrays and the uh, very nice photograph blows that out for you. So in order to make sure that the components that we're starting to identify get to the correct area of the printed circuit board we use what are called CRDs or component reference designators. They tell us the style of package typically and they tell us something about what goes there. So for instance, LED4 in this picture, would we would be able to cross-reference to the bill of material, and now we would know which component would go into that location. The CRDs are, are an agglomeration of letters, numbers, and symbols, and uh, sometimes on that silk screen, which is the printing on the board again, we know that there may be orientation markings. So we have a variety of different CRDs that are used typically in industry. These are some of the most common ones, R's and C's and SW's. So let's talk about the different component styles. So this is a chip component from the SMT family, typically a ceramic body with metal termina terminations on it. And the CRD is either an R for resistor or C for capacitor. And the resistors are measured in ohms and the caps in farads, that's the F. And there's no polarity indication. When we talk about these components, 
they're typically um, talked about in terms of their size. And these are the common size codes. Um, so in the United States, the inches column there on the left uh, dictates length by width. So let's take, for example, the 0603 size, and that means that the L is 60 thousandths and the W is 30 thousandths. So an 0603 package style would have that body dimension sizing. The most current um, small devices are 01005 or 10 by 5 thousandths. So these are components that would fit multiples on a grain of salt. We have tantalum caps um, that do have a polarity indication. Their CRD is a C and they have size code stamped on them. If we look in that photograph we see that there's an A body size code or, which indicates it's 3.2 by 1.6 millimeters. And in these component packages we are constantly jumping back and forth between millimeters and other units, so we have to make sure in the data sheet what units that we're dealing with, English style or metric style. Then we have mouths, which are cylindrical in nature. They're usually diodes of some sort, resistors, caps, or inductors. And the CRD is a function of the component type. So it's a mouth. Then we have SOTs, small outline transistors. They can be made from a variety of substances, either plastic, metals, or ceramics, or even aluminum bodies. And their um, orientation is configured in only one way, so you really can't misplace these because, as you can see from these photos, the there is an orientation uh, because it's not a, it's a non-symmetrical part. Then we have D-packs. D-packs have two types of leads on them. In this case, we see two go-wing leads, and then on the base, which you can't see, that's on the opposite side of the face that we're looking at in this photo, is a ground slug, or and that gets connected to the thermal plane on the board. Then we have SOICs, a variety of different styles. Um, typically, we talk when we talk about SOICs, we identify them with the package style, um, and followed by the number of leads. So, on the bottom left, we have ten leads aside, or twenty total leads. So, I would call that an SOIC twenty. Notice the dimple on the on the component body that would orient you to placing it in the right location, based on what you see on the silk screen on the board. So here's some of the other variants on SOICs, SOs, SOMs, SOLs, OWs, and a very common style, a TSOP, or thin, small outline package. So a TSOP 56, sorry about the typo there, the TSOP 56 would be a 56 leaded, thin, small outline package, SOIC. Then we have leadless chip carriers, typically ceramic bodies for high temperature, high current producing applications. This package has been around for a long time. There's no leads on this package. And we also have a polarity marking on it. Then we have PLCCs or plastic leaded chip carriers. These are featuring the J leaded components. Then we have QFPs. It's a high density package style. And these have the gull wing leads associated with them. And be, as the pitch got smaller, the tendency for those specific leads to be bent increased. So then we put bumpers on the corners. BGAs we talked about previously. They can come in plastic, metal, or ceramic body package styles. Um, and there, there's a um, a dot or a bevel or some kind of marking for pin one location. Then as density needs have increased even further, we haven't gone and shrunk the parts necessarily. 
Um, what we've now done is we're stacking parts one upon the next. In POPs, we're generally mirroring some kind of processor along with a memory unit and sometimes a coprocessor as we see in the cartoon, three high. And they too feature balls, and so it's little parts stacked on one another and then stacked onto the printed circuit board. So onto the through-hole components, we have thermistors, and they measure uh, resistance, um, or, or they respond to changes in temperature by changing their resistance values. Then we have different kinds of resistors. We'll notice the, the bands, the color bands on these resistors um, on the lower photograph as well as the markings on the larger black component body style. And again, those rings make a difference depending on the position and the color that they're in. In the upper right, those blue uh, devices, um, those are variable resistors or potentiometers. You'll notice there they have a little dial on it, and so we can use a wiper arm to either give us the full resistance value or next zero or next to no resistance value. Then we have crystals, another through hole component that dictates the timing of events. And these are metal packages. Notice these are radial style packages. Then we have capacitors, uh, some of which have a polarity marking would be indicated by plus or minus or even the lead length would indicate the capacitor uh, anode and cathode values. Then we have dual inline packages. Dual inline means we have two rows of inline leads. This is an older body style and typically you would find these placed into sockets. We have a notch there and that would indicate orientation on this particular device. We talked before about transistors. This is a, a singular transistor, maybe a power transistor, and generally it's oriented on the board where the flat side is marked on the silk screen. So the image of the package is married to that of the actual component when placing it in. Then we have IC cans, and similar to the transistor, we have the outline of the package to determine proper orientation. We also had through-hole connectors. Um, we didn't go through the surface mount version of these, but there's also surface mount uh, connectors as well, but the connectors can be through-hole devices. Then we have single inline packages, and these can either be plastic or ceramic in nature, and they have feature a single inline through-hole uh, leads that go along the length of the component. And those have a stripe or a dot marking their polarity. So thanks for looking into the component identification